Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today I got a hand plane for you. I want to talk to you about this plane right here. This is the Stanley 239 Dado plane. Now it's an interesting plane. Patrick Leach's website tells us this is a grooving plane that was used to make grooves in wood molding for wire. Electricians use this thing. Um, it's an interesting little plane. It has a handle that's big enough for your hand, but it has this little circular thumb hole. It has a fence, as you can see. This one is an eighth of an inch. They come in four sizes. Eighth of an inch, five thirty seconds, three sixteenths, and a quarter of an inch. Uh, I think if I really had my druthers, I'd get the quarter of an inch size. It might be a little bit more usable for woodworkers. Now mine is complete. It has everything. It has the fence, it has the knicker, and it has the blade, and it has as you can see right here, let me find it for you, right there you can see the death stop. Uh, so it's a complete plane but it's broken. As you can see this piece right here should extend out another inch and a half or so to about here. Doesn't affect the use of the plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this plane up. I'm not going to do a complete restoration on it because it's a user plane. I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to put it to use. And I filmed all that. This is the finished product. I'm going to show you how I did that right now. So let's go to that. Alright guys, here is the Stanley number 239 special dado plane. Here's a good look at it. I'm going to go ahead and speed the uh, camera up here and take this thing fully apart. What we're going to do here is give this a little bit of a evaporous bath. It's not in that bad a shape. It's missing some of its japanning, but uh, there's a little bit of rust on the blade and the knicker, and I just want to get it uh, cleaned up as best I can. The screw heads and the two fence rods also have some rust, so we'll get that cleaned up here uh, in evaporust, and then we'll go through the process of getting the blade sharp and putting it back together. You see here I'm expecting the blade now. Uh, I'm not really sure how I'm going to sharpen that, but we'll figure that out later. Uh, for now, let's get the tub out. My evaporous tub is looking pretty crappy there, but hey, it works. And here is evaporous if you haven't actually seen what the uh, gallon jug looks like. I get mine at uh, Harbor Freight. I believe it's available in other places. So in the evaporous goes the main casting, the fence, and the rest of the parts. I'm going to let all of these little pieces soak overnight, and I'll be back in the morning to continue. Okay, everybody, the uh, Stanley 239 has spent uh, the better part of 24 hours in this bath of evaporust. So let's get it out, try it off, and uh, see how we did. Those two rails, uh, the fence rails, were rusty, so they're looking good. Uh, the two blades look good as well. They were rusty. So evaporust, as usual, did its job. This thing looks really good. I'm going to just give it a good quick drying here speeding the camera up so you don't have to sit too long through this. I am looking at the parts as I do this and I'm pretty darn happy. Uh, this thing looks uh, to be in very good shape now. There is definitely some Japanning loss on this body. And to be honest, it's broken. It's missing a front piece of steel. I don't think it's going to affect the plane at all, but I'll show you when we assemble it, the up close uh, look at where it's missing. So here's a little shot of the plane dry as we slow back down. There's the main casting. Looks pretty good. All in all, I'm pretty darn happy with how this turned out uh, in Evaporus. I'm going to let it dry for a little bit and we'll assemble it. Alright guys, I'm not really sure how to sharpen this thing, but uh, it's a very thin blade and it has a point that comes to it. You know, it's two edges that come to a point, which is in essence what sharpen is. So I'm just very easily going against the flat edge here and, uh, you know, I'm just going to give it a little uh, run on my thousand grit stone and get it cleaned up 
and then flip it over and I'll do the uh, beveled edge and bring it to a point and see if we get a burr and see what happens. Alright, now we're uh, working on the bevel edge of this blade and, you know, at an eighth of an inch it's kind of difficult. You have to go slow. So I'm just getting it to rest on the bevel and just dragging it back. Um, done this about 15 times and it is, uh, it's cleaning the edge up. I'm trying to show it to you here but it's kind of hard. It's so small. But 15 or 20 of these and uh, we have a fairly sharp blade. Alright, now for the assembly, and uh, the first thing I'm putting on here is the knicker. Uh, this thing has a knicker, so uh, it's a true dado blade, it can go across the grain. The knicker uh, is kind of an interesting little piece of metal there, it's actually hollowed, uh, so it just has a point on each edge of the thickness of the knicker blade to us uh, score the fibers when you're going across the grain, so kind of an interesting piece. Uh, I'm going to speed this up here as I assemble it and then we'll get back to using it. Here we can see the plane fully assembled. And here I am using it, guys, and it works. Um, I, uh, I'm going to be very honest, this was not my first attempt. There's a little bit of a learning curve to use something like this. Pretty much any plow plane, dado plane, moving plane. Uh, getting the fence uh, and holding it straight is a bit of a learning curve. But as you can see, I was able to make a groove. Okay, here we can see it works on the face of a board too. This is just a little piece of pine that I'm making a box out of. You can see it's dovetailed. But again, this is a good use case for this. Uh, little boxes like this that have eighth of an inch little hardboard bottoms, this will work really well. There you can see. All right, everybody, so as you, you can, can see, it's capable of making a good groove. I struggle with this plane. It has a learning curve to it. I, at the end, was able to make a nice groove in the uh, edge of this board. I was able to make a groove in the face of this board, but it, it took me a little bit of learning. But you know what? With plow planes, grooving planes, dado planes, uh, planes with fences that you gotta you gotta push the fence in, and then you want to push it forward. There is a learning curve there, so that's not the end of the world. Is this the most useful plane in the planet? No. I mean, let's be honest. At the quarter inch size, it might be a little bit more useful, but at my eighth inch size, I, I can see me using this for small boxes, you know, with hardboard uh, bottoms. Um, but it, it's not going to be my most used plane, there's no doubt about it. A table saw with an eighth inch table saw blade uh, can do these grooves just as easily. So, <clears throat> I enjoyed putting this plane into service. I really think it's kind of neat looking. It's a beautiful plane. I mean, I like it. Even though I have the broken piece here, this is a very functional, usable plane, and I enjoyed putting it back to use. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, that really would help the channel. And have a great day. We'll see you in the next one.